Hello, it's Mark Coleman to watch GF Mark on 3D and today we're going to be creating this sci-fi build up using a particle system and then emitting a bullet. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel and please leave a comment below about what do you think about this tutorial, what do you think about the speed and is there anything else that you'd like to know. So let's start off by deleting the default cube, shift A, add in a mesh, let's add in a UV sphere. I'm going to press numpad 1 to go to front view. I'm going to scroll in, rotate Y 90 degrees to get the UV sphere looking at like this. Tab to go into edit mode. Let's go Z into wireframe mode, select everything, control B to box select, and we'll select all these vertices, delete vertices. From here, I'm going to alt right click and select that edge loop, F to create a face, select everything by pressing A, scale it up and scale it on the X axis to kind of make this type of cone. This is GX, just so we've got it on that origin point there. From here, we're going to create a particle system. So I'm just going to tab to go into object mode. And on the right hand side here, I'm just going to select the particle system, press plus, and I'm going to start the animation at frame 50 and enter. And I want the particle system to be finished about 150. Lifetime of the particle, let's bump this up to about 80. Number of particles will bring down to only 100. Let's come down into velocity and we're going to change the velocity to 0.1. So what that will do is it won't force itself out as fast. It kind of just pretty much appear. We're just going to come back up into the source and change the source from faces to volume. This will now spawn all the particles inside the cone rather than on the edge. From here, let's scroll down to render. And at the moment, we've got render as halos. We want to change that to object. At the moment, we don't have an object. So I'm going to do shift A, mesh, and icosphere. I'm going to go scale 0.25. Let's right click back on our, let's right click back on our cone, come down to our render and in instance object, I'm just going to use the eyedropper and select our icosphere. From here, scale randomness. I'm going to put this up to one and I'm going to move down to field weights and I'm going to turn gravity off. If I zoom in a bit and press play, we can see that at frame 50, that we've got particles now spawning. What we want to do is have them kind of magnetized to a specific point. From here, what I'm gonna do is shift A, and we're gonna add in a force field, and we'll add in a force. And the strength here is currently repelling, but we wanna bring them in. So I'm gonna go minus one. And so now when we press play, we'll see that these particles will be attracted into this point. However, the issue is at the moment is that the particles are coming in at a constant speed, which is not what we want. So I'm going to start off at frame 50 and I'm going to change the strength to zero. I'm going to right click insert keyframe at about frame 120. We're going to make this minus one right click insert keyframe. And at about frame 150, I'm going to put this at minus 10 right click insert keyframe. So now what we should see is that the particles will spawn and slowly begin to get sucked in. And then it goes a little bit crazy. So what we see here is kind of um, the particles overshoot too much. So let's come back into our particle simulation. And rather than having them live for 80, let's bring them down to maybe 50. And let's have a look how that goes now. Still quite aggressive towards the end there. So let's not make it end at 150. We're going to end at 120. And this will be the last one we check. I think for this one, we will bring this all the way down to maybe 100. And from here, what I'm going to do is add in a new particle system. I'm going to select the old particle system and duplicate that. So all our settings are the same. From here, I'm going to change the lifetime to 20. Let's bump this up to 150 particles, but rather than the start time being 50, I'm gonna start it off at 80. So what we're gonna have is at frame 50, we're gonna have a few spawning. And then at frame 80, we're gonna have a lot more spawning. And so let's press play and see how that looks. And to me, that's looking quite nice. I'm gonna bump it up to about 200 to really fill in those details. Let's go back into the first particle setting. I'm going to bring the lifetime down to 40 and maybe in the second one, let's bump this up to 105. From here, we want to kind of add in that twist. So shift A to add in a force field and we're going to put in a vortex, rotate Y 90 degrees. And so that's all we've got to do. And now if I press play, we'll see as they spawn, they're already going to start spinning and then they kind of get sucked in. Now it looks like our particles are dying too much before they actually get brought in. So what we'll do is let's extend the life to frame 120 and at frame 100, we will have the lifetime at 40, but at frame 120, let's bring this down to about 10. 
right click insert keyframes. We'll do the same over here and 120 right click insert keyframe come over to here let's change this to 40 right click insert keyframe and now if we press play let's have a look what happens so to me that's now looking quite nice from here i'm going to right click on the ico sphere let's go into materials add in a new material i'm going to change the surface from principal bsdf to emission change the color to a blue and the strength to about three. From here, I'm gonna come up into filters and we're gonna enable the rendering and what we see and the ICO sphere, I'm just gonna turn off in the render. So if I press F12, we don't see the sphere. So let's close that down. From here, let's go back into the particle system, go into the particles property, come all the way down to render, show emitter, we wanna turn it off. And for the other one, we'll turn that one off as well, which already is. So now if I press F12, we see nothing. Let's just come back into here, F12, and we've got plenty of dots there, beautiful. Now from here, what I'm just gonna do is add a little bit of some compositing. I'm gonna come into the compositor. Let's enable use nodes, move that around. Shift A, let's add in a viewer, and we'll throw that in there. So now I've got the image in the background. Now I want a bit of a glow coming out of it. So Shift A, search glare. Let's put that in. And then I'm just gonna press F12 again. At the moment, this glare node is not doing anything because we're gonna do this in cycles. In EV, the options aren't 100% there. What we can actually do is just go into Bloom, enable Bloom. So when we go F12 now, we'll see that everything's got a bit of a bloom. Let's go into the world settings and just set everything to black. There we go. Let's do F12 again, escape that. We can come back into modeling, go into the render view, come into the materials and we can change the strength of the emission to five. And we can see now there's much more of a bloom there. So if I go F12 now, we can see that those particles are now emitting a bloom. However, Eevee is still very limited. So I'm gonna do everything in cycles. So back into the renderer, let's change the cycles back into composition. And now we've, we can see our streaks. We don't want streaks, we want fog glow. Let's come back into the render settings and I'm also gonna enable motion blur. You'll see that there'll be a bit of a blur as the particles emit and they get start getting sucked in. So what I'm gonna do is now is I'm just gonna do a quick full render just to show you guys where we're at at the moment. And make sure before you start the actual render, you go back into compositing and connect the glare to the composite to make sure that the rendered frames actually capture all this data. And this is what we have at the moment. It looks quite nice. I'm fairly happy with it. So let's move on to the next section. So back into the modeling, I'm gonna do shift A, add in a mesh. Let's add in a cylinder. Time to go into edit mode, rotate Y 90 degrees. Let's scale that down a little bit. I'm gonna grab this outside edge, GYX. <laughs> From here, let's go into wireframe mode. We'll grab this face, press I to do an inset and bring that in. From here, I'm gonna add in something a little bit more fancier on the end. So I'm gonna do control R to do an edge loop on the end there and bring that about here. I'm gonna do control B to do a bevel. From here, I'm gonna go into edge mode by pressing the number two and let's go select this, alt right click, shift alt right click, do another bevel. From here, let's select these inner circles and I'm just gonna scale that up. Let's now go into solid mode. And so we kind of got this little bit of a turret on the end. From here, I'm gonna press search and type in shade smooth. There we go. However, this bit here looks a little bit ugly. So I'm gonna go into object data, go into normals and turn on auto smooth. The next part is let's create the bullet that kind of flies out. So shift A, add in a UV sphere. Let's go tab into edit mode, rotate Y 90 degrees. I'm gonna scale that down. Let's go into wireframe. From here, we'll go side on with numpad one. I'm gonna go into vertice mode. I'm gonna select this very edge vertice. From here, I'm gonna press O to, to put in proportional editings, or we can come up to the top here. G, X, and we'll move it along. But let's just scale that in. And so we've kind of got this teardrop shape. And from here, what I'll do is I'm just gonna grab that and let's just bring that one in a bit, this one in a bit, and this one as well. There we go. So we've got kind of like a bullet coming through now. So let's have a look. When do the particles end? About 140, we kind of stopped it. So at about 170, I'm gonna put this bullet to a size. G, X, let's put it in the barrel. And I'm gonna scale that down a little bit more. 
I to put in a keyframe, location, rotation, scale, and probably at frame 240, I'm just gonna go G, X, minus one, zero, zero, zero. Let it go flying, and we'll press enter on that one. Press I to set a keyframe, and we'll do location, rotation, and scale. However, I do want the bullet to be a little bit bigger, so probably about frame 13173, I'm gonna scale it up a little bit. Let's go I, set the scaling, and at the moment, because we set the scaling down here, let's work out what the size of it is. It'll be point whatever that is. So let's now come to the end frame, Control V, Control V, Control V, I, set scaling. And so now it comes out, it expands, and then it flies off into the distance. Let's add the emission material to that one. There we go. And one other thing for some extra details, let's come back to when it shoots off. I'm gonna set a keyframe on the actual turret and go location, and then about frame 175, let's just go GX. I'm just gonna move it back a little bit. I to location, and then it can kind of slowly return. So I'm gonna do Alt G to reset the location, I, and inset the location. From here, let's just bring up the graph editor. So I'm just gonna click and drag here, change the editor type, and we're gonna to go to graph editor. I'm gonna select our turret, and this is what we got. So at the moment, if we watch it, it kind of fades slowly, and then slowly returns. I don't want that. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna box select all this section here, T, to bring up the interpolation, and I'm just gonna click back. And so what's gonna happen is as it comes through, it's gonna shoot back and then kind of like slowly return itself. Oof, lovely. Last thing we've gotta do is just set up the camera. Let's just clear the graph because we don't need it. I'm just gonna select roughly in the middle here, F12. Let's have a look what this looks like. Beautiful. With the camera, I will set the distance so it can see a little bit further. So let's bump this up to end to about 500 meters, I'd say. And that means because we sent the bullet a thousand meters, the camera's not actually gonna see it past. So it should be a speck away. From here, I'm just gonna hit render and let's have a look what it's like. So render, render animation. So that turret seems to be moving back a little bit too slow. I think it needs a little bit more of an oomph. So once again, I'm gonna open up the graph editor, find the location of the animation, which is all the way down here somewhere. I can press the period on the num keypad and that'll take me directly to the animation. From here, I'm gonna select that vertice and I'm just gonna go G, Y, and let's just bump it up. Maybe leave it a little bit more. And so now it should come all the way back. So let's go back into the 3D viewport. And if we slowly move, we can see how far back it goes now. Even we might expand. So it goes a little bit further and slowly returns. I don't need to re-render everything. I know I'm gonna start rendering from frame 170. So change with the start to 170. And let's go file render animation.